Hello, beer tubers, and welcome to another Throwback Thursday with me, Peter, the master of hoppets, taking a trip down memory lane, trying some kind of old school beer. Actually, this was more old than I thought. We're going back to revisit some Fuller's beer. Actually, this is not a revisiting of a Fuller's beer, but it kind of makes sense in the Throwback Thursday segment because it's aged beer, and it's also, um, you know, kind of like historic beer. Actually, it smells quite good from here. So... Fuller's has for years now been doing their past masters series where they kind of check out old or revisit old recipes and try and rebrew them. And I guess we kind of also have to dedicate this review just for a very special person. You might know him, Eddie Van Halen. He passed away this, well, when this airs, it's, I guess it's about a week ago, but from cancer, which is a shame. He was one of my all-time favorite guitarists. And when I grew up, when I was, before I was really getting into metal, Van Halen was some of the stuff I listened to all the time with my friends. So it's, it's a bit of shame when, like, these legends died. So, horns to Eddie. Uh, so, dedicating this review to him. But, yeah, you know, it's just, it's just crazy. So, this year's just been nuts <laughs> in terms of not the best things happening. Uh, but, yeah, hope he's doing well. Wherever he is, shredding some guitar, maybe drinking some good beer, who knows? That'd be dope. Uh, I've been listening to Van Halen playlist like this entire week. Like nuts, it's crazy. It's, yeah, it's a shame. Really, I, when I was in high school, I did a music project where he was one of the, the people in the project. But back to the throwback beer, a little throwback to some music. But this is interesting because this is... A series that I actually used to review quite often back in the day when they started it. I had a point where I was like trying to review all of new Fuller's releases when uh, I was younger because I was so into Fuller's. I think Fuller's is one of the UK craft breweries that in, like enticed me the most because their quality of classical beer was really high and they were just really tasty. It's also one of the first breweries I actually went to and visited and did a brewery tour. And I even have a video you can check out, which is great. Um, where we get a tour of the place. But yeah, I haven't tried this one, and this is the Fuller's Past Masters 1905 Old London Ale. So as I said, with this series, they take a look at old recipes from the past, and they have a huge brewing archive, and they try to recreate things from the past. Uh, this was released in 2017, and we have 2020 now, so this is a three-year-old bottle, and it also says that it's best before end 2020, and I actually went to a local supermarket, saw this, and was like, hey, that could be fun to check out, because it was on sale with a lot of other different past masters, and I took the ones that I thought, well, I chose this one, because I think this one could handle the age, the other one we'll see, because that's an ESP, but yeah, this will be interesting, so... This is their Old London Ale, and it's a Burton Old Ale, or a Old Burton Ale. So it's interesting, a lot, a lot of ancient English beer styles nobody really knows about anymore. When people think English beer styles and old stuff, maybe they think about milds or dark milds or bitters maybe even, because you don't really see that stuff in like, at least the modern craft beer world. But before the era of pale ale and everything, Burton Ale was one of the big things or big styles of beer known to be consumed in the UK or in England. And the area of Burton on Trent is also one of the places where, uh, you know, pale ale became really popular and India pale ale and all this like kind of classic stuff. And I think one of the first recognized Burton Ales was Bass, uh, not pale ale, was it called Bass Copper Ale or something? It was a Bass Ale. And you know, there's been done many Burton nails since, but there was like the Burton nail was kind of like in between a, a bitter and kind of like a mild ale. It was like it was more malt forward. It was not as hoppy as a bitter. And there's interesting quotes about how, from I can't remember from like a, which scholar it was, but about how it was intriguing to see which people would drink the old sweet malty beer and the new hoppy beer that was so overly hopped that it was too much. You know, it's so funny because you've heard that from old guard people nowadays too with IPA. It's kind of the same thing. Uh, but this is an attempt at recreating that beer and this is an old bottle as I said and uh, oftentimes Burton old beers would also be part of what is known as stock ale which is kind of similar to barley wine. All these kind of things also is what morphed into what we also know as barley wine style ale today. 
Uh, but yeah, this is from 1905, this recipe, and it was selected by the brewers at Fuller's alongside the beer historian Ron Patterson. And yeah, as they say themselves, it's stronger than a mild ale, it's darker than a bitter, and it was a particular favorite in London pubs, especially during the colder months. So, dark, 7.9% ale, and also, like, one commercial example, this is Fuller's 18, is it 1845 or something like that, the beer, yeah, 1845, like, the commemorative beer for the brewery, uh, which I think is great, I think I've always called it an English strong ale, but actually, that is more or less a Burton ale, a uh, Burton strong, uh, a old Strong burnt nail, and the names kind of get confusing. But this will be really interesting to check out. It smells a little bit oxidized from here, but we'll see how it goes. So 7.9% old burnt nail. There we go. It looks stark. It looks lightly hazy. And there's definitely bottle conditioning going on in this bottle, which is great. You can see it in the bottom of the bottle, too. But it's a ni very nice dark kind of copper mahogany color. And it's got a nice beige head to it as well. It looks like what I'd expect from... Fuller's Golden Pride, or 1845, actually, in color. Something along the lines of that. Uh, and then, yeah, a nice, as I said, like, it's like a beige kind of head to it. It smells quite nice from here. Let's check it out. With, well, three years of age. Oh, it smells, yeah, it smells oxidized. <laughs> it's, it's got, like, that port or Madeira wine kind of thing going on. But otherwise, it smells quite nice, like lots of caramel and toffee, toffee and fudge, and you can really see like this being kind of like a progenitor to, to a barley wine style ale. Because it's like sweet and caramelly and toffee and biscuity and bready. And then you get like, like those kind of layers of oxidized kind of port notes, but it's also even like there's some like pruny notes. And also like a bit of brown sugar. But it smells like a sweeter beer, which is what it was. It was... You know, a sweeter, darker beer style that was, you know, stronger and meant to be, you know, savored. It was, and it's, yeah, it's just, the only thing with it, though, it's also a little bit papery, so I think it might be a bit past its prime, but let's check it out. Let's give it a taste. Cheers. Yeah. Ah, it's a little bit past its prime. The interesting thing with bottle conditioned beers like this, they evolve in the bottle, and this is like quite oxidized. I don't think it's like so much that it's undrinkable, but I would have loved to try this fresh air because I think this would have been really nice. It actually also has a little bit of a hop character. I think Fuggles was part of the hops they used in this. They use classic UK hops. But it's got a little bit of a hedgerow y kind of hop thing, which is interesting, but. It just tastes like this was really good. Honey malt kind of sweetness, but it's like that papery oxidized. I think it's more papery and cardboardy than actually the aroma indicated. The aroma indicated more just like very nice like port wine one of them. That's kind of there too, but that's a bit papery. It's a shame. I wonder how they, like if this is still something they just got at that store, or this has been the country for a long time. But weird things like fullers we don't see it anymore. It's like so rare we see anything from them. I have an interesting battle beers to do with Fuller's Vintage Ale too that will be probably more interesting than this. The th fun thing though with the oxidation, it can like, if you leave it for long enough, the oxidation can turn quite pleasant. I, I don't think it's terrible in this, but it's just a little bit too papery for my taste. The caramel toffee fudge, definitely butterscotch. Butterscotch candy, like almost like acetyl-like, which is something you want in a lot of the English style beers. The classic English style beers has those kind of flavors. It kind of tastes like a more jammy, refreshing old ale or barley wine. Um, it's it's almost like you know it's it's lightly hoppy. It's not like that like English classic Eng or classic the English style barley wine that's like Americans do and also English beers like like sweet malty fudgy. Like, it's like in between, because it has like a bit of like hop character, it has, it has some bitterness to it as well. It's an interesting beer. Very interesting. I can see like this actually being a bit reminiscent of like the American strong ales, like or strong, strong red ales or something. Like similar to like you're not as crazy as something like Arrogant Bastard, but. 
maybe that's where I have some of these American brewers got inspiration from. It's maybe drinking Burton Ale, the old Burton Ales. The more I drink it, though, the more I like it, and the less I get of that, like, papery note. Maybe even some red apple. But they have, like, caramel fudge, toffee, and then, like, a perfumey, hedgerow-y kind of bitter hop character. I didn't expect it to be bitter, but it is. Interesting. It's a fun beer. I think it's 29 crowns. It's very cheap. And so, it's like, they still have it on sale. It was a selling in Olbo, I got it. So if you want to check this out, I think it'd be fun. If you like historic beer. But I think it's a bit past its prime. They say before end of 2020, it probably would have been better maybe a year or two ago. Um, but it's still fun beer. It's still got carbonation. It just depends on how you like that oxidized flavor. But, yeah. What, do I prefer 1845 from Fuller's? Yes. Do I prefer Golden Pride? Yes. But uh, do we prefer the vintage ale? Yes, if we're talking these kind of darker ales like this. Uh, but this, this just might be the case of the oxidation. But ratings, I think I'm gonna go in 85. Again, if this was a fresh bottle, I think I would have liked it a lot. Uh, but it'll be interesting because the battle I have going with the vintage ale, it was last year's vintage ale uh, versus or wait, was it last year's? 19? Yeah, versus 2009. I think it's something like that. It's going to be very interesting to try that because it's going to be huge differences. Uh, but I'm trying to shoot that with Judge, 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 just Michael because he wants to try it. So we'll see when that airs. I hope to shoot it this year. But very fun stuff. It's fun to, you know, try old beers. And also, I like the idea of this series. I've had, I remember there was a stout in the series that was quite good too. I reviewed some of them you can look up on the channel, but I actually didn't know that they kept on doing these. I think that's really dope. Fuller's now is also, you know, it's not an independent brewery. I think is it they're owned by, is it Asahi or something like that? I'm not entirely sure. They're owned by a Japanese company. Or maybe the, is it the same company that has all the whiskey? I can't remember, but yeah, this was fun. So yeah, around an 85. It's, it's an enjoyable enough beer. And I, you know, it's not too much with the oxidation. It's just like right around the edge. But I think fresher would be closer to a 90. So if you had the Fuller's Pass Masters 1905 Old London Ale, let me know what you thought of it. And as always, please comment, subscribe, check out my Facebook fan page and Twitter and Instagram. Give us your thumbs up if you enjoyed it and ring the bell for future notifications about videos. And I'm going to say cheers and see you guys in another video.